Welcome to Calvary Road Baptist Church's Pastor's Library, everyone. Uh, we're starting just a minute or two behind because of Zoom updating something. And so we are recording and we will post this uh, to, to uh, YouTube as quickly as possible. That means, of course, we're not able to live stream for some of you. Um, you, are, uh, you are in, uh, uh, let's see now. Let me get reoriented. Um, we're in Southern California. We're in the city of Monrovia. We're at the south end of the state of California. It is a, it is a nice day. And I am about to introduce a, a young man who is also in Southern California, but he's over on the coast. And he is in the process, of the arduous process of uh, establishing a Baptist church. And uh, he preached for us, I think it was in August of 2019. And his name is Clarence Salog. Did I pronounce your last name correctly, my brother? Yes, sir. It's perfect. Good. Got it. All right on. Nice, nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, I think the reason I initially invited you to preach um, a, uh, almost two years ago is uh, on the recommendation of your father-in-law, um, my good friend Joe Doyle. And uh, I, um, I was not here when you were preaching, but I got good reports. And... Um, so when I found out that you were starting that church, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I thought, what a, what a, I can't think of a more fitting way to wrap up the 2021 version of our missions emphasis at the church uh, than to have someone who's in fact starting a church. And so um, welcome aboard. Thank you for uh, having me. I'd like, uh, because there's some people who are here that were not here when you preached for us before. Mm -hmm. So I would like for you to give us basically the thumbnail sketch of, of your, your birth, growing up, conversion, okay, uh, and, and where you are now in the space of maybe 10 or so minutes. Can you do that for me? Yeah, I can definitely do that. Well, I, I grew up in Canoga Park. Um, I, was born in, I was born in Los Angeles. My parents moved out to Canoga Park, which is the San Fernando Valley area. Uh, and we, I lived there most of my life. Um, when I was, uh, my parents at K-5, um, and K-5 wanted me to go to a Christian school uh, for uh, just education, education-wise. Uh, my parents and my family were a Catholic background. And so, um, so there was a lot of confusion there once I started hearing presentations of the gospel. Uh, and so I went to uh, this Christian school, which is Faith Baptist Schools in Canoga Park, uh, which, was, uh, which was established by uh, Dr. Roland Rasmussen. Um, but I went there for 13 years and I, I've heard a lot of different uh, types of messages, uh, different presentations of the gospel for 13 years. Um, and so I was there mainly for education. And I would believe it was there that um, I did kind of see a difference. I did see a difference between Catholicism and um, Christianity. Um, uh, I heard the gospel. I heard, again, I heard many different preachers, many different presentations. Um, there was a time in sixth grade where um, I heard um, what you usually hear these days, if you want to go to heaven, um, you know, we, I was in sixth grade. I was just really understanding, was trying to start to understand the gospel a little bit. And a guy said, if you want, want to go to hell and you want to go to heaven. And he called a bunch of us uh, young guys, uh, young kids. Uh, we all sat in a pew <clears throat> distinctly. And he came up to us um, and he said, if you want to go to heaven, just pray this prayer. <clears throat> and me being young and me, not me, just wanting to go to heaven and save my own life. I, I prayed this prayer. And um, after I had done that, I, I, I thought I had made a profession of faith, a genuine one, but uh, my life had not changed at all. Um, I was just living my life the way I normally was. I had no fear of God. I had no new desires. 
And um, so I continue to live my life uh, uh, from junior high to high school the same. And again, in, in high school, I continued to, uh, in high school, I, can, I again heard a presentation of the gospel and, um, and uh, I, I felt like I was awakened to the realities now of, of hell and of heaven and what Christ did. Uh, but I didn't want to, I, did, I still didn't want things to change, but again, I wanted to go to heaven. And so I, I, uh, there was a, a man there who uh, led me in a prayer again. And again, I saw no change in my life. And basically after I graduated from that high school, I, I started going to church, um, but I saw my life going uh, towards a downward spiral. Um, my desires were, were, were not godly. My desires to love God and to love Christ were not existent. Uh, I would just go to church uh, on Sundays and basically Monday through Saturday, I lived the way I want in rebellion to God. I was still thinking I was still okay for heaven, but I had much doubt. Uh, uh, I had much doubt still. And it was not till I was 25, um, 25, my sin had taken me to such a, uh, such a bad place uh, physically and spiritually and uh, 25 I just I just I, I didn't have any desire to to even live um, and, I, and I was I remember it was two o'clock in the morning I was coming home from hanging out with my friends I had seen where I had just struggled with where my sin has taken me and I remember pulling over to the road and just cry, and just telling the Lord Lord I don't I, I don't want to even I don't even want to live my life anymore and I'm miserable. And I, and I started seeing that there's no hope. Um, but I did remember though, I did remember some clear gospel presentations after for, for the 13 years and then the years I was at Faith Baptist. And the Lord reminded me that um, only he could change my life. And that if I would call on him and place in his work alone, um, that he could save me. And not by my own merit. And so, uh, again, at two o'clock in the morning, uh, just pulled over to the side of the road. I, I, I call. I cried out to the Lord, and I, 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 I was so broken over my sin and what I had done to God, and saying that I was a Christian and living the way I was and uh, doing harm to His name, and and that broke me. But I, I, I called on Him and. Um, after I called on him, there was an immediate change in my life and my desires. Um, I didn't care what I lost. I just wanted, I just wanted to serve the Lord now. And so things uh, immediately changed uh, once I had trusted Christ as my Savior. And so I started serving the Lord. Uh, I started serving the Lord any way that I could. I started serving the Lord at Faith Baptist Church Canoga Park. Um, uh, after uh, the Lord. Uh, had uh, the Lord had called me to go to uh, go just finish uh, at a Bible college. I attended uh, over there a, a West Coast Baptist College. I I was just learning things and I wasn't aware of just different things. I just wanted to serve God, and so I went as an elementary teacher. I served as an elementary teacher for three or year, four years. Um, I met my wife uh, while I was teaching. And while I was serving as a teacher and an and as an elementary teacher, that God uh, started showing me, changing my desires on what my purpose was. He called me uh, to preach. Um, I didn't get any opportunities to preach uh, outside uh, in the church, um, uh, and but I knew my calling was was there. And so I talked to my father-in-law about it, and he he encouraged me. Uh, to, to just take every opportunity that I can like, to preach. I started preaching at the rescue mission. I started preaching at the nursing homes. And where that's where the Lord started really showing me uh, the burden I had and the desire I had to learn God's word and to share the gospel um, in, the, in the biblical way uh, that uh, I have learned the gospel. Um, and so I, I, um, so I, and so I, I, I just took every opportunity to preach, and finally I got an opportunity um, to uh, 
I was ready to leave um, Canoga Park and just step out by faith to find a church or maybe start, start a church. Uh, but the, there was a Filipino ministry at Faith Baptist, Canoga Park, and their pastor wasn't able to pastor anymore. And Pastor Tim had asked me to take over the ministry, just to direct the ministry. And so for two years there, I started, uh, that's where I served the Lord and just got a taste of just what it might be to pastor. And after that, the Lord led me to a church in Kansas um where uh for two years and uh, they needed a pastor and finally the lord uh the lord showed me that he was uh preparing my heart to come out here to oxnard california and uh to plant a church and so uh about two years ago we came out here and um the lord has led us to this ministry here and uh during this time it's uh been like uh during the COVID time um, the church looks completely different from when it was first started. A lot of people have uh, uh, not come back because of COVID, but a lot of people have come uh, because the Lord has led them there and they were desiring to find a church that was continuing in the preaching and the gospel. And so, uh, so from two years ago till now, our church looks completely different. It was almost, it's almost like a replant of the church plant. And God has been incredibly gracious, um, uh, and and the uh, people there have been uh, have been faithful to continue during COVID times, and so we, me and my wife, were very excited to see what the Lord's doing, and so basically that's where we are right now. And um, any other questions, Pastor Waldrop? I'm happy. Well, to you answer. you have had some serious challenges along yes. the way of late. Yes. That's and right. so if you would be interested, our church has been praying for your wife uh, for a considerable amount of time. So where is she in, in, in her challenge? My wife right now, so my wife was uh, diagnosed with cancer about two months, uh, I, I believe it was about a month or a month and a half ago. Um, so right now she, she had a surgery, had a mastectomy. Uh, she is uh, recovering uh, very well right now. She's actually going to church now. Um, she's able to play the piano. Um, you know, we tried not to push her too hard to get back uh, real quick. Um, so she took her time the best that she could. And so she is, uh, she's able to, um, she's able to get up and do some of the things normally, uh, but she's progressing very well and thank you so much for your prayers the prayers and the provision of the body of christ has been um just tremendous to see how uh, god's god works through his people and so that's where she's at right now and i know she's appreciative of your prayers as well amen amen so during this COVID lockdown and the challenges of functioning in 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 the people's republic of california how are how are you as a pastor? How is your congregation able to try to evangelize your community? Well, that was uh, when when so when the when the lockdown happened, um, we we did stop for three months, and after more things came out and we were aware of what was happening, we had we had decided together that uh, we needed to continue. And so by God's grace, uh, even the facility that we were renting from, um, they were okay with us meeting again. And so we just kept meeting. Um, and so, but what we did was we did not want to stop sharing the gospel. And we knew that even some people might be hesitant to us knocking on the door, trying to talk to them. But we knew that, uh, and the Lord put this on my heart, the Lord convicted me, it, it, you know, during this time, people are afraid of death, and this is not the time to stop sharing the gospel. And so uh, I shared that with the church body, and we decided that it was the right thing to continue to spread the gospel. And so what we've been doing is we just kept going and uh, printed out invitations with the gospel on them, and we canvassed the area, and we just canvassed as much as we could. Um, the the men here have been faithful 
to help me with that. Um, we started praying. We started a prayer meeting every night, and it's still continuing. Um, for the last year, we meet online like this, and we meet together, and we pray that God would um, would move, bring revival in the church body, would bring salvations, but would give us the grace to continue to preach the gospel and to share the gospel. And so we have been uh, doing that canvassing for the last year, um, but we also have now started knocking on doors again. Uh, we felt like it was the right time since things are opened up. And so we're just trusting the Lord and the people have been very receptive. Um, uh, the people here have been receptive to us going forth um, and um, presenting the gospel to them. Not, are you not experiencing any uh, fearful reaction to coming to anybody's door? It's very minimal, very minimal over here. And I'm not sure why it's that way, but um, I, I, but the Lord has allowed that. And so we haven't got any pushback. Um, our, I mean, our invitations, they have um, the gospel tracks. They have, you know, my, our, 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 our name and address, phone number. No one has called to say quit it, you know. Um, but they have, actually, people have called us to thank us for continuing to do so so well that's that, good yeah yeah uh and then some people are quite frustrated that the churches in their in their neighborhoods are are not reopened or are not having many services and they find that disgusting <laughs> that's right that's right and uh, we have had that reaction a lot as well and actually many people have come to our service to just um, they've come from different different denominations, different, uh, but they just wanted to see a church that was continuing during this time. And um, God has allowed us to uh, share the gospel with people who uh, who who do not know the Lord um, just from that from that. And so we can thank the Lord for that. Uh, but we've 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 actually had people who have come and stayed and. Um, uh, believe, uh, believers who have a solid testimony and um, shared with me their salvation testimony and they've stayed and they wanted to stay with uh, here at Southport. So what is the name of your church? It is Southport Baptist Church. Southport Baptist Church. Okay. Now let me ask you a question that you may or may want not want to address at this point. Okay. But, but, um, uh, from my from my uh, friendship with with your father-in-law, mm -hmm. um, I I am under the impression that his basic approach to ministry and evangelism has been relatively unchanged since it was given to him by his father. Okay. Um, in that same time frame of his ministry, my approach to evangelism has radically changed. Okay. Um, I, um, uh, early on, I was, I was given, um, the, um, the Elmer Towns fastest growing Sunday school approach, um, and, and the, uh, evangelism can take place in seven minutes. Yeah. Uh, you close your eyes, bow your head, repeat these words. Um, I had a go forward experience when I was 13 in Florida, I have no recollection whether <laughs> anything was said to me or not. Hmm. I do remember being baptized the next week. <laughs> um, but I got exposed to a ministry after I came to Christ uh, for real <laughs> that uh, they would never wait a week. Uh, you, you would get wet within 15 minutes. Hmm. Um, and so the way I came to Christ was different than the way I had been taught to evangelize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have you had that same kind of experience over the course of your Christian life where uh, <clears throat> your approach to evangelism now reflects more your experience than it does your training? Yes. And um, my, my, my idea of what um, 
of what leading someone to Christ was or evangelism uh, when I was as a young person and even as a 25 year old getting saved, it has drastically changed uh, from then till now. And um, I came out of a ministry and I got trained at a ministry where they would teach you how to, how to lead someone to Christ in five minutes, seven minutes. Um, I had people telling me, it depends on what kind of gospel you want to share to them, a five minute gospel, a three minute gospel. And um, I, even, even as a young person, just, I was zealous to, um, even as a 25 year old who just got saved, I, I was wanting to serve the Lord and I was wanting to do what's right. But the training I was underneath was, um, it was, it was dangerous. And I saw how, as I started to, as a 25 year old, as I started to learn the gospel, what the scripture said, as I started to see uh, how God can, how God works and changes a life and how it's not our, our methods and it's not our ideas. It, it's the, it's God who does his work through his spirit. Um, and so I, I saw, I started seeing and my eyes started to become opened about uh, the modern day evangelism. And, um, and so even the way the gospel is preached and, uh, and how it has been um, watered down. And so the Lord has really worked in my heart and broke my heart to see the condition of where Christianity, or especially uh, the Baptist, the Baptist movement, where it has, uh, let, have, where it is now, and the Lord's given me a real burden to, uh, by His grace, uh, help share the gospel, the way that would honor Him, and to evangelize, uh, the way in which He would, uh, He would. Um, when I was here, and you asked me, how's my experience? My experience on that. Um, I was a six. I was in sixth grade. Someone led me in a prayer. I had no change in my life. I had no desires. Um, when I was 18, I was scared to death of hell again. And, um, and but I didn't. I didn't want Christ. I just wanted to save my life. And I lived my life like like a devil. And then when I was 25, I finally. I had never realized how wicked my sin was and still is. And I didn't realize that I needed to turn away from my sin. And it wasn't about people trying to make me look like a Christian and feel like I'm part of a church. It was now Christ was willing to forgive my sins and my brokenness and take me into the body of Christ to use me. And so I saw, I realized after studying the gospel at 25, uh, 25, I got saved and I, the Lord had drastically changed my life. And now when I deal with people in evangelism, I, I wait for the Lord to do the work and I uh, allow the scriptures and, and, and uh, Christ and the Holy Spirit to, to do the work in that person. And I don't wait five minutes or seven minutes, but as the Lord gives me opportunity to minister to that person and share the gospel with them, sometimes it takes months and sometimes it takes uh, maybe a year or so. And but I still have a relationship with that person to share the gospel, but I found that more fruitful because people stay in church and people now want to be part of the body of Christ and they don't feel lied to they know that Christ, they've seen and they've heard Christ for themselves yeah yeah amen amen well that's good i'm i'm so glad to hear that and uh what are some of the of the the immediate challenges that you and your congregation are facing we're we're going to continue praying for your wife obviously Mm -hmm. um and for her complete and full recovery i mm -hmm. i'm I, i'm a facebook friend of hers so i get a chance to see her smiling face yes. uh on pictures from time to time which is a good thing good. so what are some what are some uh some issues some needs some uh 
some uh, areas of fervent prayer for uh, the establishing of this congregation? Well, um, some of the fervent prayers we need, we know we're, we're praying that um, we're praying. First of all, we're, we're always praying for salvations and um, our heart, our, the God has given us uh, the people there, a body where they desire to see the fruits of the labor of the gospel. And so, um, and I know that is something that burns in my heart and in their heart. And so if you could pray that the Lord would, just use the gospel uh, over in this community to bring people to Christ. And then also, you know, we're, we pray for laborers. We're, we pray for people who might be willing to come and serve the Lord here. You know, again, the Lord has brought, uh, brought the people now that he wants, but we're praying for laborers that maybe the Lord would lead uh, to continue to help us spread the gospel and, uh, uh, serve what help us serve uh, the body of Christ here um, but we're praying for that and then also if you could pray just my wife you know sh the cancer is uh, out of her body so when we got the pathology report we found out the can the tumor was bigger than what it was so we thought it was 2.5 centimeters and then when we heard about the pathology report it was five centimeters and then we thought we thought there was only two uh, lymph nodes taken out we found out there was 16 lymph nodes taken out and uh, six of them were cancerous meaning that the cancer had spread more than what we thought and so uh, our prayer our, we want would just like to ask you guys to pray that um, even though she had the surgery the risk we found out from the oncologist here um, that the risk of it coming back is 60 70 percent um, without chemo or without radiation and my wife and I have felt that the Lord has led us to go to uh, more natural treatments and uh, alternative treatments and we believe that's what God wants us to do but if you could just pray that the cancer wouldn't come back that's there's a full healing and um, that you know the Lord would keep our eyes focused on him and then even help me to be a, the, just the right support I can, uh, that I should be for her, um, just as a husband and, uh, and a father for our family. So let me ask you, how old were you when Pastor Dr. Roland Rasmussen, uh, uh, how, long, how, 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 how old were you when he passed the leadership of the church to his son, Tim? I was, I think I was, um, let me see, I think I was, uh, it wasn't even, it was, I, I think I was, I, I think I was uh, maybe 19. Okay. So, 20, because I, I believe Pastor Tim, when I, when I, when I was 18, Pastor Tim was still the assistant, was still the assistant, but the transition was starting to take place. And, and the so, reason I, the reason I bring that up is because Dr. Rasmussen uh, had a battle with cancer. That's right. Uh, and he was successful in treating that That's uh, right. with a natural, a natural approach. Yes. And um, and he had been a student of those issues for a long time. Yes, he was. Yeah, it was amazing. They gave him I think they gave him a few months and then he still he continued to he still lived till I mean, he just passed away. Um I think maybe a year or two ago. I think it was. I think it was. I think it was a year ago, August. Yeah. A year ago. Yeah. It was this. Year. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and so and so the cancer uh, never did take him. Uh, I think he. I think he was twenty years after that. Yes. Um, announcement. So. That's right. And that was an encouragement. And that's an encouragement to us. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. And so that's that's great. Uh, so that that's exciting. Now, how many kids do you and your wife have? We have five kids, and uh, five kids. Our oldest is uh, Annabelle. She's seven. Haddon, he is six. Judson's five, and then Lincoln is uh, three, and Jack is two. So, so where did Jack come from? All these others are are. I, I can tell you, I, I know where these names came from um yeah. and 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 judson and 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 lincoln so um jack jackson 
my wife just wanted Jackson. She just wanted a cute name for him. Well, that, that is a good. That is a good. Name. <laughs> and, and and you know that you know that Abraham Lincoln uh, <clears throat> was um, that his uh, that his mom was a Baptist. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, there is uh, there is pretty good evidence. Uh, that uh, at the in the closing days of the Civil War, he would he would visit a Presbyterian church in town, and it was one of the old style Presbyterians, not a new light Presbyterian. Yeah. This guy was this guy was an old gospel preaching Presbyterian, mm -hmm. and he had uh, an arrangement with the guy so that he could come in through the side door and sit on the side and yeah. then leave before the service was concluded so that he wouldn't uh, attract attention and distract yeah. and the um and this guy was convinced that he had trusted christ as a savior that he was going to uh make a a profession a public profession of faith of uh, the following sunday um and that what he and his wife had been discussing at the ford theater uh following his recent conversion he wanted to after he was no longer president he wanted to go to israel hmm. uh and and then um god had a had another plan for his life so uh so i like lincoln as a name it's it's good it's it's uh um Haddon and judson are both good names also so I like I, uh, <laughs> so that's great that's great and uh, so is Jackson, does that come from Andrew Jackson or? Uh, you know what? I think that's what, I think that's what my wife says, Andrew Jackson. So I say, okay, well, we'll take okay. that. Andrew Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, praise God. So nice to have you on. And um, uh, I hope you don't mind if, if I make this uh, YouTube video available to other preachers that might be interested in praying for your ministry. Yeah. And if you could, uh, if you could send me uh, a mailing address so that I could put it underneath uh, when I send it out to some guys, so that uh, they would have your contact information, I'd very much appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. So send. You want me to send my email address via email? I already have your email address, but I need uh, maybe the mailing address, name yeah. of your church, that kind of thing. Yes, I'd I would appreciate do that. that. I would appreciate do. that. That's good. Uh, let's uh, let's wrap up this session with a word of prayer, shall we? Uh, Father, we thank you for your goodness. We appreciate so much the opportunity to uh, have this session with Brother Clarence. And of course, we want to continue praying for his wife that she might have this uh, this challenge of her life become um, a distant memory uh, as as she uh, seeks to resolve this issue by by natural means. Um, relying upon the success of others uh, and in answer to prayer. We pray for the five kids. We pray for the ministry uh, and that Brother Clarence's uh, approach to evangelism and uh, his willingness to wait upon the Lord would be, uh, would be uh, rewarded, would be blessed with a wonderful fruit. Uh, give him fruit that remains and, uh, and bless his ministry, bless his preaching tomorrow. Bless ours as well, and we will for that thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you thank have you. a good evening, my brother. You have a good evening, Pastor Waldrip. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'll be praying for you tomorrow as well. Take care now. You take care.